Ooh, a fresh Mac. Who doesn't like that? Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In today's video we're going to take a look at the Mac Mini. Not to be confused with the Mac Mini. Anyway, this is the new Mac Mini M2. In fact, this is the Mac Mini with M2 Pro chip. So, without further ado, let's get all that off and reveal the magnificence that is inside. And there she is. The brand new 2023 M2 Mac Mini. Very nice. Got a black pull tab here to remove all of the magic that is hidden behind that black plastic. We'll get into the box in a little bit. Let's put the old Mac Mini next to it. This is the M1 Mac Mini. This is a 8 core, 8 GPU core, 16 gigabyte of RAM, base SSD Mac Mini M1 from uh, November 2020. This is the brand new 2023 M2 Pro. Let's do the peel. Now let's see what it looks like on the back. There we go, that was the bottom peel. And here we have Mac Mini. Let's do the back peel now, nice and slow. There we have it. All right. So take a look at the back of the Mac Mini M2 Pro. We have four Thunderbolt ports or USB 4 ports rather than just the two. The regular M2 model will have the same port layout as the M2 uh, or the M1 here on the right. Just two Thunderbolt ports or USB 4. Ethernet port. This is just a gigabit one. I'll be using a USB to multi gig. Uh, I don't think it's worth the hundred and something dollars to actually upgrade to 10 gig. HDMI and two USB A ports, as well as a headphone jack. And that is all there is to see on the outside of the new Mac Mini M2 from 2023. Now, while these machines may look very similar from the outside, the insides are quite different. Well, not actually open them up in this video, but just to bear with me. The M2 Pro has more CPU cores and they run at a faster clock speed. The uh, regular M1 here has four performance cores at 3.2 gigahertz and four uh, efficiency cores that run at uh, somewhere around the two gigahertz mark. While the M2 Pro here has six performance cores. This is the 10 core model. Uh, so it has six performance cores, four efficiency cores. The performance cores run at 3.7 gigahertz now, and the efficiency cores run at 2.4. So it's good uplift in terms of uh, clock speed right there. This one has eight GPU cores, the M1, same as the new M2. I think those actually have 10 now. And this one has 16 GPU cores. GPU cores themselves are a bit faster as well. They're looking at about a 30% uh, generational uplift between M1 and M2. The SSDs are a bit different as well. This has the 256 gig consisting of two chips. This one has a 512 gig consisting of two chips. The base model M2 will have 256 gig SSD consisting of one chip, running at about half the performance. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. The uh, 256 gig is definitely one to avoid. Um, it'll perform quite a bit uh, less than the even the old M1 did. In terms of overall connectivity, we've seen the port layout of both machines is quite similar. Internally, they're a little bit different. The Wi-Fi chip on the M2 has been upgraded from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 6E, so it now supports the 6 GHz band. Um, so that's a nice little uplift there. The HDMI port on the back is now capable of HDMI 2.1. It will do 8K at 60 Hz. The old one did HDMI 2.0, which did 4K at 60 Hz. 
the uh, Thunderbolt ports will do a 6K displays. You can do two at once on the M2 Pro and on the regular M1 here on the right and the regular M, uh, M2. You can only do two displays in total, one uh, through the HDMI and one through the Thunderbolt ports. So that's a little bit of difference as well. And here we have both Mac Mini side by side. Here on the left we have the Mac Mini M2 Pro and here on the right we have the Mac Mini M1. Both have their own designated screens and uh, yep, we're ready to uh, go ahead and push them side by side and see what uh, the performance difference really is. So let's get started. All right, here we can see the scores side by side from Geekbench. As you can see, the single core score really didn't differ all that much from uh, the M1 to the M2. It's mostly the higher clock speeds that give it better performance. Um, Multi-core score is quite a bit higher though. That's down to the extra P cores and the higher clock speeds overall. So if you put that across all of the 10 cores that the M2 Pro has, it's a little bit faster than that the uh, M1 was. So that's to be expected. As wrong about clock speed, it turns out this unit only runs at 3.5 gigahertz. So uh, yeah, a little bit of detail there. Also very interesting, it does not appear to actually support this Mac uh, just yet, Geekbench 5, because it's reported as a Mac 14, 12. Uh, it'll get picked up sooner or later, I bet. All right, let's take a look at the SSD speeds now. Again, on the right is the M1, on the left is the M2. Performance is pretty much the same. Nope, yep, just about three gigabytes read and write. Perfectly acceptable. Yep, that's about it. Three gigabytes per second. Not too shabby. Again, if you take the M2 uh, variants of these Macs with 256 gigs of storage, your performance will be about half this, so keep that in mind. Always go for 512 or higher, uh, otherwise you'll not see 3 gigabytes per second, but maybe about 14, 1500 megabytes. So uh, be warned. Here we can see in Cinemage R23 what the generational leap really is. With two extra P cores, we see a 50% uplift over the M1 on the M2 Pro. That's a pretty good jump. We can see 11,791 points in multi-core for the M2 Pro and 7,807 for the M1. So overall, really good result. And the last thing I wanted to try is the graphics performance. Because they promised a 30% uplift between the generations, let's see what really happens. This is Unigine Heaven, at least we're gonna run it shortly, running a 2560 by 1440 at the high preset. This should, in theory, run, although I have had some problems in the past with this benchmark. Lowering it down to medium seemed to fix the issue, but we'll see. And then we'll be able to see what kind of a graphical performance we get. Alright, so right off the bat we see the M2 is sort of locked at 60 FPS, and the M1 is doing 20. So that is interesting. All right, 75 FPS now on the M2 Pro, 37 on the M1. We'll just uh, let this run for a bit and uh, we'll get to the conclusion in the end once we start the actual benchmark. So let's go ahead and actually start that sequence right now. All right, and the Heaven benchmark is done, and here are our results. Now, obviously, the 30% is apples and oranges in this case, because we're comparing an M2 Pro versus a regular M1. The 30% leap would be M2 Pro over M1 Pro, or M2 over M1. But uh, anyway, when we look at these results, we can see we got a devilish score of 666 on the M1, and a rather pleasing... 1804 on the M2 Pro. 72 versus 26 FPS. That's a very nice increase. You'll also notice that the CPU says Virtual Apple at 2.5 GHz here. That's because, of course, this benchmark is running in Rosetta. It is a virtualized application. It's also running in OpenGL and not in Vulkan or Metal. Now, Vulkan is 
notoriously not supported on macOS, and Metal is the equivalent. But I digress. Uh, but in a situation like that, it should be even better. But because of the limited time I had to make this video, I'm just going to put this uh, uh, like this with Heaven Benchmark here instead. So I guess that concludes our little benchmarking tour as well. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video. We've taken a look at the brand new Apple M2 Pro Mac Mini from 2023 in its base model configuration with 16 GPU cores, 10 CPU cores, 12 gig SSD and base gigabit Ethernet against the slightly upgraded base model M1 Mac Mini from 2020 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and everything else bone stock. What we've seen is there has been a decent multi-core performance leap and also very decent GPU performance compared to the old Mac Mini, but there's also been a bit of a price leap. The M2 Pro over here is 1500 euros and the M1 over there was 1100 euros. So it's also quite a bit more expensive, but uh, you do get an overall faster machine. Now, should you upgrade from an M1 to an M2 Pro Mac Mini? Um, not really. Uh, the value proposition of the old M1 is really there, especially now that prices are dropping on these units. I would definitely consider just getting an M1 Mac Mini for cheaper. Uh, it should still last you about three to five years longer than it has so far. And I do intend to keep my M2 Pro Mac Mini uh, until about 2027 at least. That's my goal. We'll see if we can make that. I hope you enjoyed this video, this quick look and first impressions of the M2 Mac Mini. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.